This is your daily scripture for August 21st. My name is Henry Loke. This is God's Feeding Station. It's an honor to be with you again today as we begin the second letter to the church at Corinth from Paul, 2 Corinthians. Uh, obviously, Paul is the author, and he wrote it uh, from Macedonia around A.D. 55, 56, uh, about a year after 1 Corinthians and a year before he wrote his letter to the Romans. Uh, the theme here is the relationship between suffering and the power of spirit in Paul's life and in his ministry and in his message. Um, there's a history to this. Um, my study Bible uh, tells us that um, Paul, there was an incident uh, or, or stuff going on at the church in Corinth and Paul had planned had, had, had planned to travel from Ephesus through Macedonia to Corinth. We saw that in 1 Corinthians and it was on his way back to Jerusalem to deliver uh, the collections that he had received from the various churches. Uh, he sent Timothy to visit uh, Corinth on, on his behalf, but Timothy found that the church was uh, in the midst of upheaval. And we've seen this with the churches that Paul had started. He would start the church and then people would come back in and try to drag them back to the legalism of the, uh, the Jewish faith. And so Paul decides he's going to go to Corinth to try to fix things and then go to Macedonia um, and then come back on his way to Jerusalem. Uh, his visit, however, didn't go very well, and he thought it was best to leave uh, without without putting up a fight so that he could extend mercy to the Corinthians. And then once back in Ephesus, he sends Titus back to Corinth with um, what is believed to be the third letter uh, to the Corinthians, which we don't have anymore. And he warned them, <clears throat> excuse me, of God's judgment if they didn't repent. And so, fortunately, many of the Corinthians did repent. And uh, the story goes from there. So just a quick kind of preface to the second letter. So, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God that is at Corinth with all the saints who are in the whole of Achaia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves were comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. For we do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we have received the sentence of death, but that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. So you must help us by prayer so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the blessings granted us through the prayers of many. For our boast is this, the testimony of our conscience, that we behaved in the world with simplicity and godly sincerity, not by earthly wisdom, but by the grace of God, and supremely so toward you. For we are not writing to you anything other than what you read and understand, and I hope you will fully understand just as you did partially understand us, that on the day of our Lord Jesus, you will boast of us as we will boast of you. 
Because I was sure of this, I wanted to come to you first so that you might have a second experience of grace. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and have you send me on my way to Judea. Was I vacillating when I wanted to do this? Do I make my plans according to the flesh, ready to say yes, yes, and no, no at the same time? As surely as God is faithful, our word to you has not been yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaimed among you, Silvanus and Timothy and I, was not yes and no, but in him it is always yes. For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. And it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us and who has also put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. But I call God to witness against me. It was to spare you that I refrained from coming again to Corinth. Not that we lord it over your faith, but we work with you for your joy For you stand firm in your faith. Paul follows in the footsteps of Christ in the sense that he doesn't ask or talk about things that he hasn't experienced uh, himself. When it comes to suffering and the troubles and the persecutions, he speaks from a firsthand knowledge. The word that he uses for affliction um, means in the Greek, actual physical pressure. And... That's what Paul feels. It is this weight um, for, uh, well, the weight of the people who are pursuing him and pressuring him and persecuting him. And it is the weight of those uh, and of, of, of those in faith, of those he brought to faith, of the churches he established because of his love for them. And we know from history that early Christians faced a lot of trouble. And a lot of abandonment of their friends and their family. A lot of hostility from neighbors and the authorities. And persecution. And so you can, you know, we all felt the weight of things during COVID. And we've had various situations and things that we've dealt with in our lives where you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. But Paul talks about enduring. Again, the word in the Greek is not defined as just, okay, woe is me, right? This acceptance that comes from, well, there's not a damn thing I can do about it, so I'm just going to deal with it. It is a spirit, a, a frame of mind that says, okay, I've got this, I accept it, but I know that I can triumph over it by the grace of God. And um, Barclay, <laughs> Barclay quotes um, this in his book. He, sa- he says, someone once said to a sufferer, suffering colors life, doesn't it? The sufferer replied, yeah, but I, per- I propose to choose the color. So it's not just, a, a, you know, being Eeyore and woe is me. It's about Facing it, accepting it, and then dealing with it and coming out of it victoriously. Um, And the good thing is we're not alone. And when we deal with these things, when God brings these things, he goes through it with us and helps us and gives us the tools to get through it. And we have comfort in that knowledge. It's um, It's a comfort that brings courage. And it is a comfort that enables us to deal with the things that life throws at us. And so Paul says this type of suffering, it's the overflow of the suffering Jesus endured. Hence, we are sharing in the suffering of Christ. And it's a privilege to share in that. And the disciples looked at this suffering and the persecutions and the things that what they went through for the faith as being judged worthy. They saw it as an honor to suffer for the faith because they were, uh, a lot of them were witness to what Jesus went through. And so they felt it uh, an honor and a duty to deal with it and to share in it 
and to come out of it stronger in faith so that they could lead others and guide others through the trials and tribulations that they would endure and go through. So that's the suffering that Paul's talking about. And so just like when God gives us a method to overcome temptation, he will always give us the strength and a way to get through the sufferings that we endure in this lifetime. And that's where our comfort should lie. Have a great rest of your day. Lord willing, we'll talk again tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.